to appreciate God for all he did. And how many of us were there on Monday? Was God present? I didn't hear you. Did you receive any visitation from the Lord? So we would rise up. We will join the ones who have come out to publicly declare the goodness of the Lord. And all of us will give thanks to God. I know our time is fast spent, but 10 minutes of singing and praises and giving of thanks to the Lord. Uh, I was out yesterday morning. I was going to the office with three of our guests from Ibadan and uh, one of our children. And then the devil struck. He was very mad at what happened on Monday. And a, a twin vehicle ran into us. Uh, even though the damage was, was much, but thank God because every one of us came out on hurt. So he has lost the battle again. So we have reasons to give thanks to the Lord. I mean, after such a successful meeting, and you get to hear that pastor had accident, he's in the hospital, or something terrible had happened to him. But thank God because God gives us victory all of the time. Will somebody rise up and shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Now this is what we do. Within the 10 minutes that we have, Dr. Sachs will still be there to lead us in singing. I want the ministers, they will dance out for us, give their thanksgiving. There's the ministers and the workers, followed by the covenant partners, and then the rest of us will do that. In 10 minutes. So ushers, you can place your basket here. I'll be here. I'll be dancing at the same time. I'll be watching out for those who are not dancing. If you are not dancing, even if you drop an offering, God is not going to accept it. And until the 10 minutes is over, nobody is permitted to sit. All of us will remain standing, dancing, and singing to the praise of the Lord. Um, for those of us who were not around on Monday, or even those of us who were around, the resource unit have sent and information here that they have few copies of the DVDs of Monday's service. So on your way out, you can please visit the resource stand and then other materials also will be there. You can get a copy of that DVD and send to your loved ones. Uh, God is ever dynamic. Whatever he did on Monday, he can still do again in the life of people. So, Dr. Sachs, over to you.
I heard the Lord say to me, for somebody here, I'm reversing an appointment in order to favor you. Amen. I don't know who that person is. The appointment already is given to somebody else. But God says, I'm reversing it in order to favor you. Thank you, Jesus. I, I could see angels distributing letters. And, and as people are receiving it, they are rejoicing. They are rejoicing. They are rejoicing. They are rejoicing. There is a letter that is getting into your hands before this month ends that will bring rejoicing to your home. I, I mean, they, they are still sharing the letter. They are still... They're just giving, the, there's rejoicing. I, I see each person as they get the letter, they jump up, they jump up, a letter of joy. It will get into your hands in the name of Jesus. Appointments, 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 appointments. I mean before the end of this month. The month of August is going to witness many testimonies of appointment and appointment and appointment and appointment. God has power to reverse even the irreversible. For that person, I would, I would want to hear your testimony when it happens. Because God says, I'm reversing an appointment in order to favor you. Father, we return glory to you. Who is like unto you? Amongst the gods who can be likened to you. Glorious in holiness. Fearful in praises. Always doing wonders. Father, we thank you. Our hearts rejoice in you. Our hearts are gladdened by the great things you've done for us. Father, we've only shown you a bit of our appreciation. The appreciation continues in our hearts, in our homes, in our offices. But Father, as a family here, we've just decided to show you a little of how much we appreciate what you have done. Father, please accept our thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I want to particularly appreciate you for the great deliverance you wrought in my life yesterday thank you because you never allowed the enemy to have the upper hand father i give all the glory to you 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 in the mighty name of jesus i take it not for granted what will i have been saying one of the guest pastors was right at the point where the impact was the greatest. And Lord, we want to thank you that we didn't have to send any sad news to his wife at home. That the ones that were with us in the car also, we didn't have to send any sad news home. Father, we give all the glory to you. We exalted our Father. We thank you. 
the head of the devil is already crushed never to rise again thank you father we bless your name in jesus name we have given thanks can we give a resounding shout of hallelujah to the lord god bless you be seated in five minutes i just want to challenge us and encourage us we've had so much from the lord on monday and the bible says in the book of second peter chapter 1 and verse 19 second peter chapter 1 and verse 19 it says we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed let me take, tell your neighbor take heed you didn't say it well. Take heed. Take heed. To take it means you need to draw something to yourself with a force. So God says to us, I have released unto you the sure words of prophecy, but you need to pull it down to yourself with a force. Every word of God spoken to us has power in itself to bring fulfillment to what God has spoken it to do. Every word, every single word you find in the scriptures has power sufficient in itself. If it's just the word amen you find in the scriptures, there is sufficient power in that word to bring about a fulfillment. So God is saying to us again, it is not over yet until those promises find fulfillment in your life. You are not going to let go of it and say to God, oh, maybe another destiny encounter meeting, maybe I will have my testimony. God says, I've already released that testimony to you, but you need to pull it down to yourself with a force. You need to take heed to it. God has spoken the seed of his word. Our theme for today is the incorruptible seed. God already has spoken the seed of his word. His unfailing word. His word that can never see corruption. He has spoken it into your life. He has spoken it into my life. What you do with the seed is what determines what becomes of the seed in your hands. Yes, everybody have received the seed. But we don't all get the same result from the seed we have received from the Lord. What each of us does with the seed determines what becomes of the seed in our hands as the lord promised us fruitfulness yes he has spoken the seed to us you have the seed of fruitfulness in your hands but what you do with that seed determines what becomes of that seed in your life god's word will never return to him empty Oh, many of us, some of us have responded to the posting we made on Facebook. Oh, it was such an awesome time. Oh, many of us said, oh, I enjoyed the word ministration. Yes, God spoke the seed of the word into your life. But what are you doing with the seed? The seed in itself, though viable, though potent, will become nothing except a man that is called the sower does something with it. Will you want to be the sower of the word? Or you just want to keep that seed there? It's potent. But if you don't apply it, nothing happens to you. If you don't pay due attention to the seed, you will never get an harvest. Never. But has the seed the potential to give you an harvest? Yes, it does. But you need to apply the seed for the seed to work. I wouldn't know what God spoke into your life on Monday, but I do know that whatever God set into your life is incorruptible. It can't fail. It can't fail. Because most times, after an encounter with God that way, one week, two weeks, nothing happens. You discard the seed. But God says, as the rain that comes down to the earth and the dew that follows, Isaiah 55, 11, that will not return to him empty, but will water the earth, 
given seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He says, so shall his words be that have proceeded out of his mouth. Many of us will jump up and say, oh God, I received my marriage. The seed is in your hands. But what will you do with that seed? It's in your hands. Jesus told the story, the parable of a sower. When you read the book of, you find it in all the gospels, but you find in Mark chapter 4, when you read from verse 3 to 9, the seed, the sower, the same seed, different results. The same seed, different results. Four applications, four results. The Bible says that a certain man took his seed to go and sow. And the first one planted it by the wayside. By the wayside is the place where it's not, it's not particularly meant for me. It's anybody that passes by here. Oh, maybe, maybe that pastor just made a guess. Maybe it was just a guess. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not sure I really knew that I had that problem. Maybe he just said it like that. That seed has fallen by the wayside. Now, look at what happened to that seed. That seed never found expression. The Bible says, as soon as that seed landed, birds of the air came. And they took it. If it's not meant for you, it's meant for some other people. So they carried the seed to go and deposit the seed where the seed will find usefulness. Maybe the devil has started saying to you, can't you see? Can't you see? It's now three days and nothing has happened. Maybe it wasn't really you that God meant when he said that thing. Say to the devil, shut up. God has given me the seed and I'm not going to allow any bird of the air to take it away from me. You've got the seed with you. The second one, the Bible says that that one fell on the rock. And as soon as the sun came, hit up the rock, the seed got eaten up, and then it dies off. That talks about stony heart. You know, some people, no matter how much God speaks to them, they harden their heart. Say, oh, for four years I've been hearing the same thing. In fact, that particular pastor has prayed for me more than 20 times. Nothing happened. The heart has become a rock. But guess what? Whether it is rocky, whether it's by the wayside, God is so large-hearted that he keeps throwing the seed. Keeps throwing the seed. There's a particular plant they call saxtrophage. I read of that plant many years back. When you drop the seed of that plant on a rock, it grows out a little shoot, and then the root begins to weather the rock. Over time, it begins to crack the rock. It cracks it. Its root finds its way through the rock down. You can give God's word room enough. Even if your heart was hardened, that word will break that hardness. Some people you pray for and say, Pastor, please don't deceive me. Because the heart has been hardened. The third one, the Bible says, that that one fell among thorns. Now, it, it didn't fall among grown thorns. There were thorns also in the same soil. But the seed fell there. And the Bible says that as soon as the seed grew, it was the seed that grew first. Read your Bible. The Bible says that the thorns also sprang up and choked it up. The first seed never found expression. The second seed never found expression. The third seed managed to grow. But just before the fruit appeared, the thorns came up. Doubts, fear, unbelief came up. I said, are you really working on water, Peter? Are you sure you are really working on water? No, no, no. I think I'm sinking. And at that point, he began to sink. When the devil tells you, oh, remember it was like this the last time. Oh, can't you remember that you just a week to your wedding when the guy said he was not interested anymore? You say to the devil, shut up. That was then. This is a new seed in my hand. 
and I'm watching this seed to give me an harvest. Can I hear amen to that? Amen. Don't allow the thorns come up to choke up what God has set into your life because God has spoken the incorruptible seed into your life. And then the fourth one, the Bible says that that one fell on good soil. Well prepared soil. A soil that has been nourished with faith. Hope. And then the Bible says that it, it grew up. It flourished. And then it gave up and harvest. Some 30 fold. Some 60 fold. Some 100 fold. Even if you got 30% harvest, you got an harvest. If you got 60% of harvest, you got an harvest. If you got 100% of harvest, you got an harvest. But 30, 60, 100, which one is best? How many of us will go for 30? How many of us will go for 60? How many of us will go for 150? Can I hear you shout amen? Amen. So you need to make up your mind that if God has given you the incorruptible seed, you will not allow anything stop you from enjoying the harvest of that seed. I've been receiving some testimonies since Monday. Amazing testimonies. Sometimes I wonder why some people don't come out to testify. It appears to me that the people that God has given the best are the ones that keep back their testimonies. They would rather send it. It's good. Even if you don't send it, it wouldn't change the fact that God has done something. Before it got to you, the angels have recorded it. They've given praise to God. Right? It's just that you might deny yourself a privilege of receiving from God another time. The incorruptible seed has been sown, has been given to you. What will you do with that seed? As we rise up to our faith, I'd like to ask you again, did you receive any word of promise from the Lord on Monday? Some of us came on Sunday for the prayers. And I thank God for those who came. About 800 people came for the prayers on Sunday evening. I thank God for those who came. Did the Lord speak something into your life? Did it look like, oh, that is me. That's me God was talking to. You, you received that seed. Are you still holding the seed in your hand? Or you've thrown the seed away. If you have thrown that seed away, go back to where you threw it and go and pick it. Because the seed you have thrown away is incorruptible. And your name has been written on it. If you go look for another seed with another person's name on it, it won't work for you. God already have given you your own seed. Go and look for that seed and plant it. Nurture it. If it's a wayside, barricade it. Put barricades around it so that you confine it to yourself. If it's on a rock, you can crack the rock. The Bible says that we should break up our fallow ground. He said, don't sow among thorns. Break it up. You can break it up yourself. You can persuade yourself to the point of believing God's word. You can speak to your heart and say, no, you can't just go this way. Why can't you think of it another way? You can break that heart. Break it. And if there are thorns there, pay attention to it. As soon as your seed starts growing, look around it. If there's any other plant that doesn't look exactly like the seed you planted, uproot it. Get rid of it. Don't give it room to grow. As soon as that dow starts coming up, quickly silence it. Don't let it contend with the seed. In your heart and if god has helped you that seed had fallen on the good soil tender it very well say to yourself i'm not going to wait for 30 percent harvest i'm not going to be satisfied with 60 percent i want 100 percent which is a total testimony you know sometimes people will say oh i'm waiting for god to perfect it and they never come back to tell you whether god has perfected it i want 100 percent testimony perfected testimony complete Completed testimony. Done testimony. If there's anybody like that here, that's your expectation. I want you to rise up to your feet. Rise up to your feet. 
Rise up to your feet. You're going to do your hand as if you're holding a seed in your hand. And then we'll take two, three prayer points and we will go. Do as if your seed is in your hand. And peradventure, there's anybody here, you are not yet born again. And you also, you've heard this word and you believe God have just spoken to you. And you really want this word to work in your life. It will only work for you if the, 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 the power behind the seed works in your favor. If God works in your favor, that's the only time the seed will work for you. And so if you are there and you want this word to work for you, I would like you to come forward and surrender your life to Jesus. It just takes a step of faith, a moment of confession, and then God becomes your greatest ally. It begins to work for you. You know you are there, you have not given your life to Jesus. You are already having the seed, the incorruptible seed in your hand. You want to apply it. Don't apply it where you are. Come to the altar and I will pray with you. The rest of us, do your hands as if you want to cast your seed. You are going to pray to God and say, Father, Father. I tell you, say, Father, Father. I thank you again for the precious seed the incorruptible seeds of your promises of your assurances of your blessings that you have handed to me today i take charge of this seed in the name of jesus today i take heed to this seed in the name of jesus the fowls of the air will not take them from me in the name of jesus the heat of the sun will not destroy it in my hands. In the name of Jesus. The thorns will not choke them up. In the name of Jesus. But these seeds will germinate. These seeds will flourish. These seeds will give me a harvest. And my testimony shall be perfected. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Open your mouth and pray. Pray that prayer to God. Pray that prayer to God. Pray that prayer to God. I refuse any power of the air, any power of darkness from stealing the seed of your promise that you have made to me. I have received that seed in faith. I have received it with thanksgiving. I'm not going to let go of it to any bird of the air, to any fowl of the air. I take charge of this seed. I take charge of it in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray that prayer to God. And I want to repeat, you know you are there, your spirit says to you, if you remain where you are praying, God will not answer your prayer. Your spirit says to you, why not just go out and surrender your life to Jesus? There's no need wasting time. Why not just step out and I will pray with you. But if you are fine, if you are okay, you know you, you don't have need for God to be behind you. You can do it all the same. You can stay back. The rest of us, let's pray. We're not praying. We're not praying. We're not praying. I have just two more minutes. And I've been stepping down. But I want you to pray. I want you to pray. That your seed will find expression. The seed that God has deposited in your life will find expression. Whatever God has given that seed to do in your life, it shall accomplish in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. If there's any other person that is coming, please quickly come so that I can pray for you all together. Any other person coming, please quickly come. Thank you, precious Father. We give glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. That reminds me, I shouldn't forget the, 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 the sister that gave testimony that answered the consulate uh, about to. God said, because you have confessed it, it will happen to you. And I take this moment also to pray for as many trusting God that before the end of this year, their marital status will change from single to married. Wherever they are, if they can just lift up their hands to the Almighty, I decree by the incorruptible seed of God, the word of God that fails not, according to his will and according to the workings of his grace, that expectations of yours will become a reality in the name of Jesus. 
that before this year is over, that status change will come in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I rejoice with you all. I know that very soon the cards will start rolling out. But please carry your pastors along. Whatever parish or whatever church you attend, carry your pastor along. Seek for counsel with your pastor. Don't use your human mind, your human wisdom to conclude everything by yourself. Take it over to your pastor and seek for counsel and guidance. Now, the, the second prayer point and the third prayer point, I will call it all together because of our time. I still have a conviction in my spirit some people that should be out are not yet out. It is a pity that God will not strive with you. The devil will prevent you from getting to the place where you are going to be blessed. You have already come so close to the fountain of waters. Why will you remain thirsty? If God has brought you into this hall, why won't you just take that one step that is remaining for you to start drinking freely from the fountain of life? You know you are there, your spirit says to you, go out. Before we finish the two other prayer points I want to pray, I want you to please come forward and then I'll pray for all of you together. Now the two other prayer points I want to pray together. Number one, you want to pray to the almighty God because every seed has other seeds in itself. That is why one of the commandments God gave to every creation he made is that they should produce after their kind. You want to pray to God that the seed God has given to you will regenerate. Yeah. I didn't hear your amen. That it will regenerate. Yeah. Meaning that there will never be a time when you will lack the seed of greatness. Yeah. When you will lack the seed of fruitfulness. Yeah. When you will lack the seed of breakthrough. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. And then the, the last one you will pray to God is that God will preserve you to be alive. To eat of the harvest of the seed. That is very important. That is very important. That God will keep you to be alive to eat of the harvest of the seed. Now I'm going to call the two prayer points together. As you see after me. Say Father. Father. I can say Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This seed that you have given to me. Make them regenerational. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let them generate others. Let my love not lack your seed at any point in time. And Father, preserve my life. Let me be alive. Let me be well to eat of the harvest of the seed you have given to me. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray those prayer points. Please come closer. Please come closer. Are you satisfied the way you are praying? Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied? Let me not lack the seed. Let me not lack the seed. And preserve me to be alive. Preserve me to be alive. To eat of the harvest. Cry out a little bit louder to God and let God hear your voice. Pray that the Lord will keep you. That you, your harvest will not be behind you. God will preserve you to see and to eat of the harvest. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. 
I want you to take your offerings in your hand at this time. That is another seed in your hand. I want you to take your offerings in your hand. Your offerings in your hands as we round up the prayers. Your offerings in your hands. Your, lo your love offerings in your hands. I want you to take your offerings quickly in your hands as we round up prayers now. If you have packaged your offerings, then we will lift up our offerings as we pray to the Lord. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for visiting us in a very powerful way today. Thank you for the seeds that you have given to us. Thank you because the seed will not be eaten by the fowls of the air. Thank you because our seeds will not be choked up by thorns. Thank you because we will live long in good health to see and to eat the harvest of our seeds in the name of Jesus. Thank you because our seed will be planted on the good soil that will bring forth multiple harvests in thousands, in billions, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have brought our offerings unto you as one of our seeds. We ask our Lord these seeds, O oh God, as we bring it to you. Lord, please bless it in the name of Jesus. Let it bring up multiple harvest in the name of Jesus. Let us never lack to give, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And as we go, open doors unto us. Open doors unto us. Let our harvest begin to come in bountifully in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you glory. Thank you for the wonderful things they have done in our midst. Thank you for multiple testimonies. Thank you for testimonies that were said. Thank you for the ones that people were not able to come out to say. Because you know you have done much more than whatever we have heard today. We give you all the glory, Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we go, we go into great harvest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let's share the grace in fellowship and we'll make sure we dance out to give our offerings. The grace, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord.